One owner car guy, oneownercarguy.com. And what I've got here for you today is a beautiful one owner 1988 Buick Electra estate wagon. And it's a great looking car. It's got its wear and tear here and there. Yeah, that kind of rhymes. Um, you can see the wood's a little, well, the foul wood is a little kind of faded. And the paint is definitely faded. And I'm going to go around, do kind of a once around, show you the car in all its splendor. And then I'll kind of go up close, drop underneath it, show you underneath and all that good stuff. I should have about a hundred pictures uploaded to my website, oneownercarguy.com. And you can check that out on there. Absolutely beautiful car. If you're looking for these old wagons, it's getting hard to find them in a nice clean car seat dent there. That's not been all molested and torn apart and been made into something that it's not. They even heat the suspension up out of them and people ruin these cars. But also, if that's what they want to do to them, hey man, it's keeping the sport alive. That's one thing I'll say. Um, nobody else was interested in these cars until people started modifying them. And now the purists are coming back to them. Some of them never left. Some people just love a wagon. And I don't know where the wagon disappeared to in America, but here's one of them. I'm going to drop down, show you underneath. God, I love these wagons. Just looking down the sides of them. Look at that. Back when hood ornaments were just going out, man. This grill looks great. Underneath, this car is just clean as can be. Low level light adjustment there. You can see that even the suspension parts are nice and in good shape. There's some straw and weeds. We weeded it around the car. Threw some straw up in there. Straw! No rust, a little patina on the open metal surfaces. I'd actually undercoat the piss out of this. Even the plastic inner fender wells are just in great shape. Um, tires look to have good tread and all, but they're not, I don't know. Here, let me, let, let's look close at this one. There's a little bit of dry rod starting around there. I hate that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a nice Goodyear Wrangler, SRA, plenty of tread. Mismatch set. Tranny looks good. Floors look good. That's all there is to say about it. And my screen went off. There we go. I was zooming. I hope I didn't do that back there. I'll show again. A little damp gasket up there around the plug. Here, I'll show this again. Make sure you can see it. My screen went off again. But I'm sure you can see rocker panel under here. Great condition. Look at this. No rust in the edges of all these parts. And it has been painted. It was a darker blue. I'll actually show you back here somewhere. Yeah, right there. You can see. So that's the underneath. Let me show you the last piece of the underneath. There you go. Very nice. One owner, well made end. Okay, so, it's your once around, it's your underneath, it's all that good stuff. Now, one owner, well maintained, they do come with their own set of problems that you may run into. Um, hey, it's an old car, it's a 1988. Um, things could go out. The cool thing is, the things that go out are usually pretty darn cheap. Starters are like 25 to 55 bucks, um, alternators around the same, water pumps, fuel pumps. Water pumps, I bought something for one of my old fours, it was $19. Cheap, and I've seen them cheaper than that. So, parts are cheap, but stuff like that can go. Belts, hoses, stuff like that, bands and trannies. But once you replace stuff, you know, hey, you got a long living car, and it's cheap little things to tinker on. Nothing that like that's wrong right now, it's in great shape. I just want to forewarn on these old cars. People think they're buying a car like this and spending good money on something that's gonna run like a, a brand new Ford Focus. And it just doesn't always work that way on old cars. So let's look at this car. Let's look at what we've actually got here and kind of see if it's the car for you. Call me, Nathan, 406-544-6919. Now, we chose to kind of buff it. It was very bad on the dryness of the paint. Um, the buffing didn't really work that well. So we chose to actually knock it down a little bit with like 1500. But what was happening with the buffing is the buffing compound was getting stuck in here. And you could buff on this and make it look... It's just the paint's gone. It needs a paint job. Let's just say this car needs a paint job. 
Um, it's not rusty. It's not anything. It just needs a paint job. This paint down here looks great. Sun didn't hit it. Up here, man, it's just not that good. It even peeled off along the edges here. So let's just take that into account on the whole car and figure, hey, the car needed a paint job. Um, in fact, right here, there's some bumps and stuff. Um, that's from a buffer. That is buffer damage from my guy buffering it and not knowing what he was doing. It was a good one here to do it on. And it's hard to know on this because it just bounds into it. This was so dry. Um, so he did what he could on it, but it's just not, I didn't expect a lot. And I just wanted it to look as good as it could. That's what it does, but look at that down there. Just beautiful. So you can repaint the top surface, but the truth of the matter is, do the wood too. Redo it, get some new wood on there. You can get it on the internet. Um, go with black wood, man, that'll look cool. Dents and dings, there ain't much to talk about. Now I'm gonna look down the side and I'm gonna show you down the side. I'm sure there's a couple dings in the hood. Um, get you every single angle I can here. Now all this stuff's broken out. Even the plastic retainer clips in there are still there. It's in good shape. It's just all that breaks out on a Chevy like this, a GM. And I hope this wind don't kill me for my sound. So, in general, needs paint. <whistles> Dings and dents. Well, not really a lot to talk about on this side. There's a big ding on the other side. There's a couple door dings in here, tiny. And a couple right here is what I've seen. And there may be a few more little splits in the wood right there. Paint coming off in miscellaneous places along here. Non-rusty. I think it's had a, yeah. It's had a little factory mud flap on here or something. Interesting. Okay, that's that. That filler piece is still there, but the whole back bumper one's gone. That's just how they do. And I had somebody ask, why do you say stuff like that? Well, it's usually on a car that that's just how they do. And on these, there's nothing else you can say. That's just how they do. This piece of trim is bent a little bit from being smacked here. This is not just how they do, but it's just how they do when you do that to it. This could be straightened out, I believe. Um, this piece is, it's the piece that you can kind of get for them easily. All this I would replace anyways when I painted it, just because um, it would look better to have that replaced. Uh, the bottom piece is straight and fine. This one can be straightened. It's just right there. That's Breeder, BeaglesPocket.com. Smack these out and get this thing painted. Now besides that, not a lot to talk about along the way of dings. Dents or damage. It's just in good shape. Up and down the sides. Top, faded, same deal going on. Just like that. These trim pieces are all here. Not rusted underneath them or picking up anywhere. There's a thing in that one. But they're all in great shape. Oh, breeder's going crazy. Okay, so that's the exterior. I love these. I guess you call them a sail panel. A little ding right there, maybe. Yeah, a little ding right there. I thought I said that and noticed. Okay, that's your exterior review. Um, I'm gonna hook it on up to the house. We're gonna do a test drive. I'm gonna do the interior. I can't think of anything else to show you. Around the wheel well, arch well trims. It's in great shape. Ding there. I love the rock on the bottom. <laughs> I bet you, yeah. That's tape from when they painted it. Easy part to forget. Probably the old guy that had it didn't want to strip that off either. But needs to be cleaned up a little. I see a ding right here somewhere. Very clean on that trim. Oh, missing two hubcaps. That's got it. That don't. And on the other tires, same thing right around there. Just a little bit of dry rot. And I just try to be as upfront as I can on these. Oh, one of the front bumper pads is missing. I'll show you that. Mission. A little crack in the 
tail light lens there. A little one starting there. Oh, cracks in this piece of rubber, and how this does go up and down, yes. Uh, that is dinged also, that piece of trim. That hubcap's there. I'd find a set of four, is what I'd do. Just to where you had a nice looking deal. Um, around this wheel wheel trim is in great shape. Okay, that's the deal. That's the car. Bingity bam, boom, bingity boom. I'm going to come back, do the interior, do a test drive, and show you the rest. Thanks for watching. One owner car guy, oneownercarguy.com. One owner car guy, oneownercarguy.com. And what I got here for you today is the interior on this beautiful one owner. Buick Electra Estate Wagon. Now I'm going to do a once around in a different kind of lighting here to show you the car in the different kind of lighting. It's got faded paint, needs paint. It's been maintained, it's been taken care of, and you can tell inside and outside and around that it's just been driven and used. It's not been abused. It's a very clean car. So, like I say, this is just a quickie around to where you can kind of get a feel for it in this different light. Um, check out the exterior review if you haven't. I'll pop a link here or you've seen one already. It tells you to check it out. Or this may be the whole video. Who knows? I've showed you underneath. I've showed you everything. Let's check out the inside. That's about all there is to say. Look at this fake alarm pad. Pretty cool. Okay, door panels, great shape worn up here on the foul wood or whatever guy might cover them or do them differently or even spray them in a different kind of wood pattern um, the dash wood trim is all in good condition trim rings are a little faded um a little tear in that piece maybe and the brake pedals are in good condition carpet's thin on the sides here Hardly even wear on that blue pad. Now I put some different formats or just cheap old formats I had sitting around because, well, they just looked good. That's all there is to say about it. Now this here steering wheel is a little bit faded on the top, but I think this might clean off. It really might, but I didn't do that much to it. Big loud horn. Look at door jam. This one clean car. That's original miles. You need to get a picture of that too. 73847. Look at that PLL synthesizer tuner. SPS AudioVox. The heck man. Did AudioVox make a factory deal for these? I don't know. Don't know. This has not been it doesn't smell to have been smoked in. I don't see any. I see these white marks right here and these little bit of stains in the seats here. They're not deep and dark and probably clean up. I haven't shampooed it or anything like that. There's a little mark right there. Um, just clean as can be. One thing about it, I've been seat belt into this because this one don't work. It needs a new piece screwed in there, I believe. These are raised up. There's only one ridge broke in it, but it's raised up because that little clip in there is broken. A little split starting in the dash on both sides it's doing that and slightly around the speakers now that's the interior that's all AC blows it don't blow ice cold or nothing um, I'm gonna open the hood all the interior lighting comes on trash can in there oh, yeah. no um, before I get to moving let's do this right Starts nice, man. Locks. What about this one? No, that's not locking or unlocking. So that one's got an issue with that. It does it by manually, just fine. Um, the windows are fine. This one I've had all the way down, just fine. This one's a little slower, but it works fine. 
And the backs are all good as well. You know what? Do they go all the way down? No, they do not. Childproof. Like people have problems with their kids falling out the back windows or something, right? So all the windows are good. Let's look at the seats. Man manual. No, excuse me. Electric mirror adjust. All four directions. Okay, seats. Split right there in that piece. That little piece of trim. Okay, so let's do this. Hang on. Back this off. We go down on the backrest. We go up on the backrest. That's the whole seat tilting like that. Uh, now do this one. It's down in the front. Up in the front. Up, 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 back, back, back. Down, 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 down. Okay, forward. Okay, just regular old backward. Okay, up. Down, it's down, sorry. Up. And that is all one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight way power seat. Working away. This one here, he likes to come down. Now, here's a good point for this. Needs a headliner. Everything else is good. In fact, let me double, look at the piping on the seats. Piping on American seats, kind of rare. Hmm. Wow, the whole thing went out on me. And <laughs> I locked myself in though. I'm glad I did that before I got out, man. Lock this car and shut that door. There's that one. These are working now. It's just the switch is a little off. There we go. Now, I think I blew the bulb in this somehow. Because it went out. So now you know that. Oh, the back window. It works fine. And as I told you for the headliner. It needs one. Missing the top for the ashtray and the interior inset piece, it looks like. Um, small stains in the carpet. I didn't shampoo this. It would probably clean up very nice like that. Uh, it's squeaky. It's nice, spongy, and squeaky. Okay, now this, how you do this? Oh, it's over there. Now this door, it opens fine from the interior, but it doesn't open the exterior it has a, a handle issue and there is breeder beaglespocket.com I'm gonna set this down and boom that flips down that flips down <clears throat> and that flips back so This does have a double whammy bammy tailgate. Okay, I gotta get the keys. Maybe I brought them just for that. Let's see here. The double whammy bammy tailgate. As so lovingly called by enthusiasts everywhere. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to work these darn things. Window down. I know how to do that part. That's the easy part. There's regular open. And... Alright, I don't know where that previous one ended. So, you get the window down, pull the latch on the inside. That's simple. Don't have to knock your camera off the tailgate or nothing. Just like that. Now, from there... You can pull 
this lever here, and this will come down, like so. There's your build sheet. So that all pulls down. Now, this one is buggered up a little bit, and I'll show you where. Missing the latch. You see the plastic part broke and the latch is gone. This goes back just fine. Hang on. Something is wrong with this mechanism a little bit. Like I say, it's buggered up. See, it's raised up a little there, not there. I don't know exactly what. You pull this lever, it flips right down forward just fine. Um, chances are, it's supposed to catch here too, and it's not. So that piece is not catching. Sorry to set that down on you. So maybe this is a little loose or something, I don't know. But that piece right there is not catching on that when you lay it down. The seat is in absolutely great condition. The rubber seal going around it, great condition. Headliner, not great condition. Now I can get the headliner repaired for you. Extremely cheap, I think it's about 180 bucks. I'm gonna leave that window down to where I can redo that. Take some pictures. Show you under the hood. Other side of the inside. That's got the same deal. That's not as bad like the other side. The backs just aren't as bad. I do like that piping on that velour-like interior. Very sweet, very classy. It's in great condition. With obvious flaws. Stuff, start, stuff starting there and here. Don't leak all over the place or nothing. Let's do this, man. Under the hood. A little piece. Well, it's not there now. Somebody just, you know, a little dingy ding here and there. I learned my lesson. I'm going to hang this around my neck. No matter if it swings around or not. See, we got the padding. This piece was a little messed up and hanging, and we took it down, but the rest is still there. I figured just to leave it. Um, look at this. Just absolutely beautiful. 5.0 V8. Not sure what they put in this one. Buick motor, old motor, Chevy motor. Somebody knows, please comment, help me. Talk, tell me about it. Teach me, I wanna learn. It's in great shape. Dust from the thing sitting on it, but that's about all. Now this tube here is needing replaced. Junkyard part. This here, is being hooked up and this one here is kind of a little bit not the way it's supposed to be it's supposed to go in there and hook to that and it's not exactly right let's just say that sure is clean may need to get stuff like that fixed it's not a huge issue with anything but this would just be nice to have I mean, it's still stuck in air, you can believe that. But it'd be nice to have it through the factory thing and it would look a lot better. Because really and truly, it looks great under here. Check one under carguy.com, look at the pictures and all. And that's your emissions information. If you wanna check any of that out. Man, it's 88. And I'm wondering if an 88 Course, keys are in the back. I have to look at that. Hey, that round. Yep, it works. Just have to have the lights on. That's the dumbest thing in the world. You broke down on the side. Well, that's kind of neat. If you broke down on the side of the road, you have to have the lights on. Some people may not know that. But, you know, you're out working on your car in the gay garage. You gotta have the lights on to have the under the hood light open. 
we're on. Okay, great shape, beautiful car. Make sure and check the exterior. I'm gonna do a test drive next. Go let my camera cool down. Get my dog that's barking. Beaglespocket.com, tinybeagles.com. We have two little puppies for sale right now. Okay, that's the car. That's the interior. Test drive coming up. Links all over the place. Subscribe, comment, like, share. And that's about all I can say. Showed you everything on the interior. I'm done. We'll talk to you. One owner car guy, one owner car guy .com. And what I got here for you today is a test drive of this 1988 Buick Electra estate wagon. I'm going to do a quick once around in a different light yet and show you a once around of Breeder. Breeder. Hey, you were looking over here last. There you go. That's my doggy dog. Now she's along for this because we're going home. She's got a little special spot on the passenger seat there. So this is the car. It's a nice car. You check out beaglespocket.com for the beagles. Oneownercarguy.com for the cars. And this one is a one owner. Look at them. Special custom alloy wheels, buddy. That is cool stuff. Nice big box. That's all there is to it. I showed the tailgate. Flipping down and everything. And man, it's a nice car. We're going to do the test drive. And it's that time of night. God, that makes a beautiful picture right there. Check out the other videos on it. I've got a couple of them I've uploaded here. And with that, me and Breeder are going to take you on a test drive. Look at that. Oh, it's a Breeder car. Not really. She does like it, though. She doesn't like driving, even though she just did 4,600 miles. You can subscribe on my channel on YouTube. I put the whole 4,600 miles up there. Almost got it uploaded by now, probably. Look at that light's working and everything. She's got her little spot all set up. You want to sit down? Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> This thing, eh, it's a little funky. It flips down sometimes. Wedge this in here. Oh, buddy. Listen to that. Sure is a beautiful night. Now, I think... I have told people in a previous video that it needs some work on the belt system right here because this one is not working and you have to clip into the passenger one. So you couldn't carry an extra third person. What are you doing, girl? He's a good baby girl. Okay, this isn't about the dog. I'm a little biased. I love my doggy dogs. Look at that. I like how that Okay, just work there. Now, like, there we go. Oh, look at that map lights, courtesy lights, whatever you want to call them. Call them what you will, call them what you will. I'm on quite a hill here. Four speed overdrive tranny. Now, that's one thing about this one that some of them may or may not have that you're looking at. Um, this has got the four-speed overdrive tranny, which is worth a couple extra miles per gallon, at least. The car seems to drive good. That's all there is to say about it. It really seems to drive good. It's been sitting for a while, and anything could go out on this car. Belts, hoses. Would I drive it cross-country? No. I'd want to drive it around in town and make sure it all works good for a while. You know, that's the thing on these older cars. You might be able to get a, a hose or a belt or a, a this or a that very easily in your hometown. And if you know what, if you can't get it that night, hey, no big deal. When you're in the middle of nowhere and you don't want to be in the middle of nowhere, and the car takes three days to get, that could suck. 
And that's why I don't trust these. It could be a $6 part and you're stuck for three days. This has got that um, Chevy pickup truck sound, man. I'm thinking it's got the Chevy 305 in it, but I'm not sure what they put in these. Somebody please comment. I know some of my subscribers are definite fans of these bodied wagons. And this is just a test drive, and this is like a 40 mile an hour zone here or something. Uh, we may get out here on the street where it's 45 and everybody goes 50, to where you can see what it does out there on the main drag. He said the main drag. Smooth driving rig. That's all there is to say about it. Well, I've said that a few times. So, there must be a little bit more to say about it. Definitely on a hill. I guess my point is there's only about four gallons of gas. I think the car probably gets about 15. And plus on the highway even. Let's see that downshift. Like that? Like that. Okay, well. Definitely a good runner. Definitely not in need of nothing now. It ain't leaking fluid all over, nothing like that. I went over the interior features and all that good stuff. We're all going under the speed limit, guys. Let's get this thing kicked up a notch here like that one day. The reason I was bringing up the amount of fuel is because the fuel light's coming on now and then. You notice that when it gets to the E, I mean, it's a pussy car. Maybe I can do it my floor. Yep, there you go. You see that little light it's starting to come on. It must come on at around two gallons. Well, thanks, guys. You know, you drive a big wagon like this, you expect people to get out of your way there in little Nissans and such. It's just admirable that you knew that, man. Okay, well. Look at that dust then. They don't even know what hit them, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Nice car. It really, really is a nice car. It needs paint. You know, look at the exterior video. Look at some of what I've got out there. It's not, I'm not telling you, hey, this is a perfect car. That's not my point of this video. Perfect car in eight perfect car owner guy. No. Jeez, I can't believe you hugged him over like that so far on the right. Big stick. Now you make all of us suffer. Okay, we are almost to the, the spot. I gotta let some of these people go. Because an if and I don't, I'm gonna be stuck out there in the road. That should do it. Yeah, buddy, now that is timing, right there.
Ooh, nice little E320 there. All kinds of cars. I got lots of stuff on my site, oneownercarguy.com. Fuel man, look at that big fat tires. <whistles> big fat tires. I was wondering where I was gonna park, but I forgot I pulled the Volvo on the side. Actually, since I brought this video here, I'm gonna back it up. I think everything about this car is just pretty straightforward. Um, it seems to drive, shift, everything great. Reader, it's okay, girl. We're at the other end of the journey, okay? I know, I know. Could you help me tell them about the ending here before you get all worked up? Come here. I know, I know. I know, rough life. Rough life doing car reviews. Okay, the car review in Beagle. <laughs> Beaglespocket.com. OneOwnerCarGuy.com. Nice, good driving car. Left it running this time, you can hear it. You can see all the lights. See how nice and shiny the sides are? It has got some presence. She was checking me out, checking out my car. So, that's that. Thanks for watching. Have a great day or night. Whatever it is, wherever you are, oneownercarguy.com, 406-544-6900. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you. BeaglesPocket.com.